Good evening, everyone. Today I wanted to get into just an example of how to use other softwares to help spice up, give a little more impact to your presentation. With that, this kind of extends from a couple years ago when I presented at a conference. I took some of my output from ArcGIS and put it into Google Earth. Pretty straightforward and simple. It's not complex, but not a lot of people do it, especially when the more I sit in on presentations, it's traditional your 2D. 2D maps, nothing that has emphasis or really a lot of context to it. We have great tools at our disposal, but we're not using them. Instead, during presentations, we typically get boring ass maps that really don't show much. So you end up talking about the statistics and not actually seeing the environment at the place that you're discussing. At this point in time, given COVID and everything else, there's tools out here that allow you to do more with the information you have and to share or tell a story. For those of you familiar, Google had a tour builder beta version. Pretty cool. I've used it off and on throughout the years. More recently, I realized that they're going away with that and they have now a web based version of it, which is pretty cool. And I've been playing around with the past couple of days, which inspired me to do this video. It's not going to be in depth. Obviously, they have a lot of information. I'll link to it in the video but on how to build a tour. And with that, you're telling a story. You can input pictures. If you have charts, tables, you can take screenshots and put those in. So you still have the stats and information, but you're actually showing your audience or whoever you wanna share this with, the actual environment that you're researching and discussing. This changes the perception of. You're not doing anything crazy with it, you're just changing the presentation format from a boring, traditional, PowerPoint one, you can even do it a lot in PowerPoint nowadays with linking this in in terms of screen captures and recordings to put it and embed it in. It's just asking for more. And that's what this is going to get into is how to integrate some other platforms within your presentation. So with that, what you see in front of you is a zoomed in version. It's actually Little Rock and it's separated by block groups and we have some streets here. For those of you who are familiar with Little Rock, this is I-630. It's an interstate that was designed and built to segregate Little Rock. To this day, we still have outcomes that are impacted by that. So with it, I'm working with some students now on coding through systematic social observation through actually Google Earth, coding of the streets. And if you have heard of that term before, SSO, the ADAPT lab coming out of Chicago and did a lot of work there, similar to what Samson's prior work had done on the Chicago Project of Human Development. With that, I just wanted to look at it in Little Rock, so we started coding with it. So this is a pretty cool example, example of how I could take information from Google Earth or ArcGIS Pro and take it into Google Earth and especially the new web platform for that. With it, I've already pre-selected streets within one specific block group and you can kind of see the name over here for the, the FIPS or the GOID that's unique. With it, I just made them a larger red outline with it. Because I'm going to be taking this into Google Earth, I want to have a level of transparency to it so I can still see the underlying street within Google Earth. If you're familiar with this, the format that you have it in here in terms of symbology is exported out within that layer too but we'll be in pretty good shape once we get it in there. So with it, I changed the transparency. We have some red streets. It's gonna go straight into, and you're gonna load it as a KML KMZ file extension. So if you're familiar with that, that's all we're doing here. So if I have this, then I go up to my analysis. Obviously give it a second to load. Probably have one too many things running right now. There we go. I'm just going to open my tools in here. If you're familiar with it, we go into toolbox. And we're going to do conversion. And we're going to go to KML. We're going to do layer to KML. We don't want the entire map, but we just want to do a layer to KML. So I double click that. I want to specify here which layer I want. It's the geo one here, the streets file. And I just want to output that to Oh, where should I save it so I know where it's easy to access? I'm just going to come into my courses folder and go ahead and put it in my spatial one just so if I need to come back to it, I will. And I'll go in my weekly materials and I'll put it in week seven. And with that, oh, example, streets, Little Rock. 
hit save. Right now I don't need to change much of anything else. With that I hit run. You can just watch and make sure it completes down here. And while that's running in the background, I'm going to bring over, I already have it pulled up, the Google Earth aspect, the tour part that's being built. So with that, let me just bring this over. And I'll link to these websites so you can actually go through and uh, have a bit more opportunity to look at it all. But it's truly telling a story with your maps, similar to like how ArcGIS Arc Pro has that, and you can take it online and tell a story with your map. You can also do that with Google Earth. I mean, both have a lot of similar capabilities. It's just your preference and how you want to use it. With it, you also have Google Earth that's now online. So you can spin around the globe, you can go around with it. It's pretty cool. If you're not familiar, you need to sign up through your Gmail account. Mine's already linked up here and you can change the settings to it, which is pretty cool. You can also save projects and everything else, which I'll get into here briefly. But it's nice. You can search for specific locations. You can go on pre-selected tours. You can roll the dice and it just takes you to a random place, which is always kind of fun to do. But the cool part is you can actually create safe projects and get into that. They have tutorials on it. I recommend that. It's always a good starting point. They give you some features on how you want to present your map from clean exploration, everything to a custom so you can kind of change what you want to see. The cool part I thought was turning on the animated clouds. It, it takes up the last 24 hours. So that's always fun. And then you can also do some distance and area measurements down here. For now, we don't have that though. So we're pretty limited to what we're looking at. Similar to if you're familiar with the Google Maps in general, you can drop your little person down and do the street view. Always a cool part. But the nice part is within this platform is you can add different place marks and holders. So you can take a tour of it. You can transition from one to another and tell a story with it, add images, add tables, whatever you want to do based on the information you're uploading. Similar to what we do in Google Earth, let me see where that's at, so it's done there. It takes across the attribute table from our file here, so if I were to open this, and there's not much to it right now, I didn't attach any crime or anything to it, it just gives a description of the street itself, nothing other than that, but if you had information attached to it, that would take over and go into our Google Earth file over here. So now that we have this open, I'm going to come up and just go to our projects. I just want to open and import a KML from my computer. With it, I know I saved it in my spatial analysis folder and example. I can go ahead and open it. And since it's already converted to KMZ, it's going to go into Little Rock for us. So pretty cool part to it. I don't want to store it for now, so we're good to go. But it's going to take us into that specific region itself. And if you're familiar with it, and I kind of chose this one because I am very familiar with this area. South of it is UALR. I went to uh, school there. I actually used to live up in this area. But we have some pretty cool information here. You can see our streets, our actual streets underneath, which if we select here, we can zoom around and click on each one. And if you go to presentation mode, it just takes away your taskbar on the side. For some reason, this one didn't bring it in as a red layer, probably because I did not save it before changing it, which is problematic, but you can still see them. You can see the outline here and representing each street with it. The cool part, I think, is you can even go, so I want to zoom out a little bit, you can see the neighborhood that we're going through. If I zoom in, you can see a lot of the housing, the green space, we can see mixed commercial development over here. But the further we zoom in, if I click the 3D button here, we can actually start to really see the environment that we're looking at. This changes it from the 2D kind of picture to taking someone into the environment. This is where I say it's important from a presentation standpoint, especially if conferences end up staying online and remote because of code and even cost reasons. This is a nice addition that you can add into a presentation that speaks to the actual environment, takes you to it. You actually can start walking through it in the sense of that versus just hearing someone lecture about it itself. Similar, we have we can drop our little person down and I'm familiar with this area, so this neighborhood or block group itself, University Avenue, 
is fairly high crime. It's south of 630, and I'm used to this area. And if you look around, it gives you a good description of what's going on. If you're familiar with environmental criminology, crime analysis, we have a lot of mixed land use, which is problematic. We have commercial and residential going back and forth to each other. On this street, we have bars, restaurants, liquor stores, banks, you name it. And further down, there's even an adult entertainment establishment. So we have a lot going on in this area. So it speaks to why crime could be high in this area. The cool part also is, oops, I didn't mean to click that one. If I go out of this one, I just click the guy again or person. We can always come back out and tell a story with them. When I say we add a place marker, I can drop one of these down if I want to do that. Select here. I can edit this place. I can add a title. I can save it how I want. That's the cool part. So you can do a lot with it. When I say edit, you can add in if you had a picture for this that you want to add it to it. So if you had a table with your statistics on it for a neighborhood or some other information that you want to do with it, it gives you options to do that. So that's how you can create then a place marker and develop a presentation. So as you add in more place marks throughout it, you have the option to do that. With this and in the settings aspect of it, you have a couple different basic options of your animation speed, how you want to go through it, and some of the other just thematic parts to it, which with anything, it's going to take time for you to get used to, but this is going to be much more impactful in terms of getting your audience integrated and paying attention, because if it's a traditional presentation that's, you're going over your intro, lit review, methods, results, discussion, and it's similar, just basic slides, that's great, but it's not going to give you ton of working knowledge with it and that's where it just gets upsetting when you see the same in same thing day in day out there's plenty of different platforms to get creative with it google earth is just one of them to me it's a great platform especially from our sso project that we can drop our person here go through and code each street based on drop down menu items looking at social and physical signs of disorder that we're going to link to other data sets going forward but it gives you a lot of options so you're truly making a tour for your audience itself if you had polygon files you can also upload those to where if you wanted the block group itself and some information they do have that available so that's where anything you have access to in arc pro arc gs or another software you can export to a KMZ and bring it into Google Earth and actually build a tour, start telling a story with what's going on. And if you're familiar, I did mention 630. So 630 is this interstate that separates north and south of it. But it's really a big dividing line in terms of segregation and what happened in Little Rock throughout the decades. North of it is we have some of the nicer neighborhoods, Hillcrest Heights. The walkability changes quite a bit. Uh, if you follow some of my other work and even some of the perceptions of crime, typically most of it's south of 630. It's clustered within a lot of these neighborhoods. This is the Arkansas River, our downtown river market area. Similar to like a lot of downtowns, this is converted from a central business port area. And it's kind of going back and forth through gentrification now of livability, walkability, have a bar district and everything with that. North of Little Rock is separate from Little Rock, so it is its own jurisdiction. But this riverfront and going into here, and there's even a little neighborhood that's annexed out of Little Rock itself, but it's starkly different. Kmac Village, there it is. And if you're familiar, if we the further we go out west, and I'm just going to hit the north to reposition. Over in this area is often known as kind of our West Little Rock area less densely populated, expanding this way. Uh, historically, it was kind of the white flight area of Little Rock. Pinnacle Mountain, which for Arkansas, I guess, is considered a mountain. In other people's terms, probably not. But I just would say, take some time. Use a resource like this. It's super helpful when you're trying to tell a story about a place. You can bring in your GIS files. You can link to them if, if I zoom back in here. They have all the information you need, so as I click on any street itself, it'll give us, this is the geocoding information, but it'll give us the information that we need. 
so it's pretty cool to where if you have a lot of attributes that you want to add to a file, you can bring it in. So if you have your neighborhood boundaries or a city or counties or however you want to do that, you can add it in. So as you click on it, it actually brings up your information. Obviously, it allows you to edit. So take some time, play around with it, but it's a nice way to visualize your data in a different fashion that tells a story, especially when we're getting into a lot more spatial research and spatial capabilities and understanding how place matters. Show people. They're not always going to be familiar with your area or your study site. This is a nice addition that you can do to a study that helps bring that area to someone and get used to or get an understanding of what you're talking about. If there's any questions, please feel free to reach out. This is really just an, a video meant to be an introduction of how you can use Google Earth and the tour storytelling capabilities. Highly recommend it. It's a great function. Wish more people use it in presentations. Thanks. Bye.